In an effort to challenge the validity of South Africa's new BE and transformation laws, the Labour Union Solidarity has placed summonses on President Cyril Ramaphosa, the Department of Employment and Labour, and the Minister in charge of the relevant portfolio, among others. According to Solidarity, the government has violated both the Constitution of South Africa and international labour treaties with its most recent changes to the Employment Equality Act. The Employment Equity Act was amended with the President's consent on April 6. The Labour Department expects the laws to go into force on September 1, 2023. The new Employment Equity Act gives the Minister of Labour the authority to establish demographic and economic employment equity targets for businesses with more than 50 employees. Additionally, it mandates that firms produce employment equity strategies and yearly progress reports on the accomplishment of predetermined goals. According to the Department of Employment and Labour, Violators of these rules and objectives will be subject to legal repercussions, including fines. A certificate of compliance from the department is also required for businesses that want to do business with the government. In particular, the Act entrenches the categorization of employees and applicants for employment according to race and maintains apartheid era race classification by essentially imposing a quota-based regime. According to Solidarity, who has cited three key problems with the Act. According to Solidarity, it also gives the Minister of Labour an excessive amount of authority, undermining the country's constitution's careful balance of affirmative action. Additionally, Solidarity claims that the law contradicts itself when it comes to the Republic's obligations under international law. Solidarity contends that the designation of designated groups within a workplace places an undue emphasis on racial categorization and eventually perpetuates apartheid-style classifications. According to Solidarity, the Act gave companies some latitude in establishing their own goals for their employment equity plans prior to the modification. According to the Union, the new Act eliminates this flexibility because the numerical objectives set by an employer must now adhere to the goals established by the Labour Minister. In addition, Solidarity stated that if an employer is unable to give a fair explanation for their failure to fulfill sectoral targets, they may still be eligible for a compliance certificate. Yet since there is no precise definition of what constitutes reasonableness, the Labour Minister's judgment would be used. The Act will ultimately enable the Minister of Labour to enforce top-down quotas, rather than to implement employment equity targets developed by employers following consultation with their workers. According to the Labour Union, Solidarity further stated that this new strategy under the Act violates the UN's International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination ICED and is an aggressive employment equity framework UN. Contacting the Labour Court is the first stage in a significant process to ensure that the ANC administration does not succeed in dominating South Africa through upside-down laws, said Dirk Hamon, the CEO of Solidarity. It is not justified in any way, 